The 11 inch iPad Pro is pretty much the same physical size as the old 10.5 inch, but the 12.9 inch model got a complete overhaul dropping its volume by 25%. So what is that actually going to mean in real world use? We're going to go ahead and examine all of that comparing the new 12.9 inch iPad Pro to the old one. Welcome everyone, it is Andrew here from Apple Insider, and I do a ton of work on my 12.9 inch iPad Pro. I use it all the time, everything except for pretty much video editing. I do with photo shoots on here, I do all of my writing, teleprompter stuff, it has a variety of uses, so I was so excited to see this new model. Well, I've been using it for a little while now and I have some pretty good impressions with the new model and the old one. Before we get into the nitty gritty, let's do a couple Geekbench tests and just gauge the performance and see how it has improved over the last 12.9 inch. We're not going to run a ton of benchmarks, so if you really want to see some benchmarks, check out our other performance demonstration video and we're going to go through all the different benchmarking tests comparing the new iPad Pros to the old one. We're going to run the standard CPU benchmark first and once we let it finish, we have scores of 5,010 and 18,202. The multi-core is the one we're really going to care about, so just around 5,000 and a tick above 18,000. We're also going to run our compute benchmark and get our metal score, which is 41,643. These are all some pretty huge numbers. If we compare it to a last generation iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch, we're getting around 3,995,60. Nine that means the single core jumped up roughly 25% going from that 4,000 to around 5,000. The multi-core did even better, nearly doubling, going from 9,500 all the way up to 18,000. The metal score also improved, going from roughly 30,000 to that 41,000 that we saw. That's more than a 30% jump. To say we are happy with these results is an understatement. The old iPad Pro was no slouch, and the new ones are going to be even more impressive. As we've done some photo editing already, there is a definite difference in that performance. Assuming the old iPad was powerful enough for you, that comes down to the physical properties of the iPads, the new sleeker form factor versus the older one. Now the new one is a little bit thinner, and really you can't tell the difference. Just comparing them side to side, there's a slight, slight difference between the two, but largely there's not. So you're not going to notice the difference in the thinness of them. You're really going to notice the weight and the physical dimensions of the height and width being shrunken down. After living with the previous iPad Pro that size for a couple years now, you notice the difference immediately. Whether you're on the couch, on your desk, throwing in your bag, taking to the coffee shop, there's a difference. It is significantly smaller and it has a major impact in how you use the device and how comfortable it is. It's still quite heavy, so when you're sitting down holding it in one hand, if you're getting tired on the old one, you're going to get just as tired with the new one. So the weight by the tablets isn't a huge difference, but it is better and you'll maybe get a little bit longer life out of your wrist before you have to take a break. There was one area, however, where I was a bit disappointed and that was the weight with the smart cover. When you have the new smart keyboard folio attached, it actually weighs around two and a half pounds. We're pushing about 2.5 pounds here when we measured on our scale. We take our old iPad Pro, stick on the smart keyboard, so it's no longer the folio, you don't have the back protection, and it weighs less. You're pushing two, 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 three pounds, so there's a definite difference. So if you thought the weight was different before, it actually weighs more with the new smart keyboard folio. So if you have that attachment on there and you want the less weight, you might want to go for the older iPad Pro. This is definitely a bummer. I use this keyboard every single day, day in and day out for typing. And to put it lightly, I have opinions. And you can see more about that in our upcoming Smart Keyboard Folio review. Condensing everything we've talked about so far, is there a difference between the old iPad Pro and the new one in the 12.9 inch model? Yeah, there is a huge difference, especially when you're looking at the iPads themselves. Even if you don't take into account the weight, the smaller physical dimensions makes a big difference. I could give or take the weight or the thinness that we're seeing. But what I love is how much narrower this iPad is while retaining that same screen. It's a big improvement and you definitely notice. When you take that size difference, as well as all the new features, the USB-C, the rounded corners on the display, the improved camera, the internal processors, everything as a whole, is it worth swapping out your 12.9 inch iPad Pro from the new one? If you have the first generation one, absolutely. Trade it in, sell it, and upgrade to the new model. However, if you have the last generation 12.9 inch iPad Pro, 
the picture is a bit fuzzier. My recommendation is if you use your iPad all the time and you're pushing the performance, it may be worth upgrading to that new model. However, if you usually use it for watching movies around the house, reading emails and some light typing, it may not really be worth the upgrade. You could hold off for another year and see what the next model brings. If you want the best price on the new iPad Pro, check out the price guide down below in the description. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media, and we'll see you in the next video.